Hey guys, Lust here. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a three-part video on my uh, recent uh, Shadowverse Evolved uh, Champion Showdown with my Leonidas Sword. Uh, luckily, uh, I did pretty well this time, so my locals... I got on the feature match for my locals. So I got three matches here. One versus the Mirror Match, one versus uh, Control Haven or Aegis, and one versus uh, Forest. And I'm going to go ahead and go over them and talk about like tactical play and whatnot and what I needed to improve on or what I thought during the time. So let's start. So this is going to be sword versus sword. And uh, I lost the dice roll, so he's going to uh, he's gonna let me go first. So I go first here. And we all know that in the sword mirror match, uh, whoever goes first is unfavored because, uh, number one, the issue is... Most of Swords plays this format are revolving around Evolve effects, and since you go first, uh, your turn 3, uh, you can't play Photo Fencer, and Sword doesn't really have really good turn 3 play, while your opponent can curve out Photo Fencer, so they'll always be like one turn ahead of you, and they can always, uh, they can slam Leonidas on 6, while you cannot. Like, those are like very important checkpoints, and Sword doesn't really have the aggressive uh, curve it had before to... Uh, force out a lot of responses, which makes going first favored. So, uh, let's start. So, going first, uh, I mulligan my hand, and then I I have I opened a pretty good curve of uh, Maid Leader, Luminous Knight, I think I also had a Bell Ringer. So, it made the hand pretty playable, but uh, the thing was, I if I played the Bell Ringer, and, like, I wouldn't have a really good play following up into it, so I decided to play uh, main on one, and then so I can evolve it on two, and potentially search for my turn four play, without having to play the entire thing on turn three, because I think that's going to be a little, a little too little uh, pressure. Because going first as the sword player, I have to put enough pressure so that I don't die to the floor on three. He thought of it for a while, uh, but he also decided to play the maid leader. Uh, this is good because it's unpunishable in the mirror match. I don't really have something. To uh, other than like a, a bullet or a unbridled fury, but if I do that, then I wouldn't be able to evolve my own maid leader. Since I played maid leader on one, I'm for sure evolving maid leader on two. So the maid leader on on one for the opponent's side is unpunishable. Over here, I thought of it for a while, and then I still I, I wanted to pick up a wand blader here because I didn't have a lot of uh, follow-up in my hand. I had a lot of early drops, but I didn't draw into any of my late game. I didn't draw Leonidas, I didn't draw uh, Alexander, like some important pieces of my deck. But I still thought that uh, since I was going first, Avant can't come out until turn five. And if I didn't have the floral, I don't think I'd be able to survive until then. So that's why I chose to uh, play the floral fencer. And here I decided to rack up the two damage on its face instead of not attacking. And obviously, uh, since he played the maid leader on one, he's also foreshadowing a maid leader on two. Uh, interesting enough, he didn't use an evo point, so that means that he doesn't have any other one drops in hand. If I had literally any one drop in my hand, be it uh, a, a bell ringer angel or a quick blader, I would probably have uh, I would probably have used the evo point in order to just establish board presence because as the going second player, you are one turn behind. So yeah, and also uh, he trades in because as the going second player, you're you're uh, behind on tempo, so you need to like protect your face. Uh, he searches Avant here, so this is giving me information that he already has Floral Fencer in his hand. So I'm going to be staring down a potentially a turn 3 Floral Evo into a turn 4 Avant Evo, which is like one of the most oppressive curves that the sword player going second can give you. Which is not good for me. As you can see, uh, my turn 3 play... Uh, was, like I said, I brick, I, I didn't brick, but I, like, drew a bunch of, like, early drops, so I was like, damn, this doesn't feel very good, uh, I don't have a, I'm not gonna run the floor on on three, that's just not how it works, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and play a bell ringer angel and a latham, and I'm not gonna ward the bell ringer angel, because that plays too hard into his floor offensor, I don't want, I don't want to just get the card draw and let him hit in for free, so I decided not to ward the bell ringer angel. Yep. So now he plays the Floral Fencer on three, which is like very standard, of course. This is like the 
the sleeper moments in the sword mirror and since i'm going first i'm gonna play my floral on four now like there's not there's nothing about it it's like if you if you don't have this play you don't play sword so like you have to play the floral fencer there's nothing to do i'm gonna i'm gonna uh engage both of my followers that can be engaged because now i need to uh make it as difficult as possible for him to clear my board so now i put him at uh 15, yeah. Two from the main and three from the Latham. The Latham's actually, like, relatively hard to clear for Sword. Because it being a 3-3 three, three means that, most likely, it needs to be traded into by a 3+. plus. And if the Floral decides to trade into it, the Standing Knight can trade into the Floral. He thought, uh, my opponent thought of it for a while here. What the actual play is. And then plays a Gem Staff. And I think he fetches up a Aurelia. So, now that we know that the Aurelia is in hand, I'm going to be playing around that Aurelia next turn. If he, if my opponent allows me to, obviously. Because <laughs> uh, having an Aurelia that's a 6-8 is not what we want in the Sword Mirror. Especially not, like, when they develop it, they can also clear our board. That's, like, basically, like, unwinnable from that position. And then he shows us the Unbridled Fury for 4. So he basically takes care of our biggest follower, like, with for instantly. So now we're instantly put on the back foot. Like, this is, like, very tempo negative right now. Uh, he's taking back the bo board by force, and I don't really have a really good answer for it. And now, uh, after thinking about it for a while, he's going to go ahead and swing the uh, knight into my face, and then the floral fencer into my latham. And our board state's going to look relatively poor. So let's, let's go ahead. Yep. So... Moving into my turn, uh, my turn five, uh, as the player with no Evo points and Sword doesn't really have a good turn five play, he has a 4 1 Floral Fencer, a 2 2 and 1 1, and a 3 2 with an Aurelia that's been searched, so I know that I don't want to have three or more followers present on my board by next turn in order to not, uh, not play into him, so now uh, I'm gonna have to play with that in mind. So what I'm going to do is, instead of, like, developing a board on my own, like, playing a second floor offense or whatnot, or, like, just trying to flood the board, I'm going to go ahead and set up for my next turn play, because I have an Alexander in my hand right now. And if he commits to the board next turn, I can probably just take it back, so... And that's, like, the only thing that Sword has going for it, going first in the mirror, is that we can play Alexander first. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and trade the 1-1 one -one to the 4-1. One. I'm going to go ahead and... Search up a Leonidas, since uh, turn seven is almost coming up, and turn six we're gonna play Alexander. If we don't have uh, if we don't have Leonidas by then, we're like too slow on our game plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the win condition here, and uh, trade off the two twos, and then play a Luminous Knight, buffing my knight, my Steel Glide into a three two, and put him at twelve. Twelve is a very interesting number because that's the number that uh that Albert can get to with a banner on board, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, we're, we're like basically threatening lethal on him. If we get to set up Leonidas. So it's, a, it's like a very important swing here. The one the, the one damage buff from the Luminous Knight definitely came up here. And this is not the hard, the easiest board to clear. Because uh, if he doesn't clear the Luminous Knight, uh, he I'm threatening three more damage, and who knows, I might have multiple storms in my hand, and with me being at such high life, I can just erase him now. So this puts him at a very bad spot. Uh, my opponent's gonna do what I consider to be the only misplay of this entire match uh, this turn. So with six play points, oh uh, no, with five play points and an Evo point going into his turn five, uh, my opponent's going to decide to play a Floral Fencer, use an Evo point. So now, like, we're extremely behind on board. Okay, the floral is going to run to the steel clad, and then he's going to un unbridled my, uh, my luminous knight here. So that's going to leave him at exactly one play point. Uh, and I, I think this Unbridled was not necessary because with five cards on board, uh, even if I threaten to attack face with a Luminous Knight, 
he, this this unbridled fury could have been used on what what's what I'm going to do to try to attempt to clear his board or when I'm trying to lethal him. Hitting the luminous knight uh, isn't better than like let's say hitting a like the um the, the novice stripper that's gonna go for lethal or whatever, uh, forcing me to overextend. Uh, that act this actually baited me into thinking that he actually had the third unbridled fury because there was no reason for him to use an evo point since uh, he had five play points and this is only four play points with the evo point. So I I actually hesitated a lot whether or not I was going to Alexander his board and what order I'm gonna do it to because I feared that I was gonna go ahead and run straight sh straight into the f the third copy of Fury and just die. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see. I'm gonna go ahead and take the four damage here, and obviously, like I, 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 I think I stand Alexander early, and then I'm just like thinking for a really long time. What's the order to attack? Let's say, assuming he actually has the third Unbridled Fury, what I wanted to do was uh, get my Alexander's health exactly like around the point where uh, it dies to the Fury, and then I attack the Floral. So, like, ex assuming he has the Fury, I kill this, I kill that, I, I kill this, and then this Al Alexander would be at um six and uh, he has three on board that's when i want to uh kill this and then attack into this so then it, even if he furies i would kill the floral if i attacked this and then he furies me here i lose everything and the floral is still alive i want to leave him with the with the lowest possible card while clearing the most things playing around the last fury because for for some reason he left up one play point because that was that was the only thing i i thought but after clearing the two knights and him not furying me uh i kind of I kind of thought of it for a while, and was like, oh, he probably doesn't have it, he's just bluffing it. So I just went, attack, 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 I cleared everything. Yeah, so, like, if he had saved the Fury, the only Fury he had, uh, for the Alexander here, I think he would have just won this game straight up. But, uh, the fact that he used it early on the Luminous Knight... Because he was like under a lot of face pressure, I, I think was one of the biggest misplays this game. So now going into his turn six, uh, he chooses to set up an Alexander, which is out of range of all removal. That's not like a neutral removal, like um, execution or Erd, which is pretty good because like I can't actually remove that card. But uh, with him being at such low life. And him not choosing to play Leonidas out, I thought that I can just play my own Leonidas out and force him to have an answer to it. Even if he chooses to hit the Alexander into the Leonidas, I'm okay with that trade. So right here, I just choose to run out Leonidas, and I'm at a healthy enough life total such that I'm not going to die on the crackback uh, if I choose to let his Alexander live. Because Sword just doesn't have that much uh, burst without uh, the, Leon the Leonidas banner on board. So I go ahead and activate the effect. Uh, deal 5 damage to Leonidas and deal 5 damage to Alexander. The Alexander is now at a 5-2. Uh, and the Leonidas is now at a 6-2. No, no, 5-4 and a 6-2. Here my opponent obviously doesn't have the out. If he had the Erd, he would have slammed it down already. Uh, him not having it. Him not instantly slamming down the Erd means that he probably doesn't have to execute either. Because if he did, he would he would run the Alexander in and then just execute the banner. And he is at such a life total that he cannot actually threaten to clear the Leonidas or else he loses to Albert. <clears throat> so he's actually in a very tough position now. Here my opponent thought of it for a really long time what his... Uh, what his play should be, and let's fast forward a bit. He decides to play a maid leader, use his last evo point, search up a bell ringer angel, which can stop the Leonidas without having to kill it. <laughs> which is a very good play. That's like one of the only things that can save him. Play an avant blader, attack, and then play out the bell ringer angel and ward it. <clears throat> And then I here I drew a unbridled fury I think, and I have exactly eight play points. And I, I, I looked at like a bunch of storm in my hand, and I'm like, oh, I have exact lethal. I'm gonna go ahead and tell him that I have the six from Leonidas, the seven. Here, I'm just calculating right now. He's like, oh yeah, he's at twelve. I'm gonna do six. 
7 for one quick blader, 8 from two quick bladers, 11 from the novice trooper, 12 from the luminous knight, and then the exact last one to kill the ward and attack with everything. And that's going to be game. Yep. Uh, ultimately, uh, both sides didn't make that many misplays this game. Uh, it was, I think, more... Uh, the, oh, the biggest misplay was uh, my opponent not having the... Uh, not saving the Unbridled Fury on my Alexander and choosing to use it on the Luminous Knight despite it being a quick. Uh, despite Sword not having a lot of spell trap-based removal uh, that uh, his Bridal Fury can't respond to. And otherwise, uh, this game was just how like the mirror usually goes. If the play, if like the player that like establishes a Leonidas that his opponent doesn't have an out for first, usually just pressures enough to win the game. Yep. And see you guys in the next video uh, where I'll go over the uh, Seraph and then the Fairy deck. Okay. Yep.